Penny March time. Penny March, turn to 629. Show us your love and great abundance. And Lord, we ask for your presence now. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen.
I'm really concerned about that because I think I may have to prepare my own supper tonight. <laughs> I do that just to make Donna's head explode. <laughs> uh, no, do pray for her. She's got a, the same thing I had about three weeks ago, the head all stopped up and everything. Just, just a lot of stuff going around right now. So uh, if nothing else, it would improve our prayer life, right? All right, open your Bibles, if you would, with me to Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. We're continuing our study of sound mind in a crazy world and kind of a, a sub-study of that. We've been looking at the priceless and tangibles that Christ provides for us. Uh, peace, or joy and peace and contentment. And now we're looking at hope. And in particular, we're going to be looking this morning how to cultivate hope and I, I have a lot to cover, so I'm going to try to, to cover it quickly, so you're going to have to listen quickly, all right? Uh, because we do have communion this morning. I forgot to announce that, but since we didn't do that last week, we're going to do that today. All right, in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the, through patience, the patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Another verse I want to look at this morning also um, is in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15 and verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. And I think in the authorized version it says miserable. Father, we do thank you for another day of grace. Thank you for this opportunity to gather as the body of Christ, Lord, for uh, this embassy, this place that represents our true citizenship, which is in heaven. And Lord, we ask you to help us to be fit representatives of, of that kingdom. We pray this morning that as we open your word, you would open our ears and our minds and our hearts, that it might find fertile soil, Lord, that it might spring forth and bring a crop that would glorify you. As always, Lord, we pray for those that are here this morning that may not know Christ. Lord, uh, for them, they, they are in a hopeless situation, but the good news is that they can have hope found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that you'd help them to realize their condition, repent of their sin, trust Christ before it's eternally too late. In his name we pray, amen. All right, we've been talking about the subject of hope and how in the Bible hope is different. In the world when uh, people talk about hope, it's kind of an iffy, might work out, could be type thing. Like I hope this stupid weather changes soon. Uh, this is uh, up and down and people, I think a lot of the sickness because of this weather. But that's not the kind of hope that we're talking about when we talk about the Bible hope. And Bible hope is something that is sure you you can mark it down it's coming we just don't have it yet it, so it's a sure thing a sure kind of hope now it the, you know in church culture today uh, there are two views about this hope the first view about this hope is that Jesus died and I'm going to say it tongue in cheek Jesus died to give you a better day as Landon uh, often speaks about in other words a lot of Christians hope today, and it's preached from a lot of pulpits, is that Christ wants to make you happy and wealthy and healthy. And, and, and that this life is going to be great because you know Jesus, right? It's kind of a, uh, you know, I call it positive thinking or name it, claim it, blab it, grab it type thing. Uh, that, that, that's what all the, our hope is about. But again thinking of the Apostle Paul's words in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which, by the way, is the great resurrection chapter. Paul says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of the, of the most miserable. Our hope is not really in this life. You've got to understand that. Because a hope that is vested in this life is going to let you down. How many of you know that Christians get sick? 
All right? How many of you know that Christians have financial problems? How many of you know that Christians have kid problems? Or parent problems, if you're a kid. Or interpersonal relationship problems. How many of you know that this life is really not all that great? It's got to be, our hope has got to be more than having a good day. Because that's not going to sustain you. What our hope is, is that one of these days, we're going to vacate planet Earth. We're going to go to be with the Lord. We're going to be in a place where all of this bad stuff is gone. All the stuff that's a result of the fall. I, I said this a few weeks back. My, my, my hope of heaven, I don't, I don't care about streets of gold, all right? Because Joan's going to make me take my shoes off anyway. So I don't get any kind of marks on it. And she's going to be cleaning it every day. I, I don't care about the streets of gold or the, or the mansions or any of that stuff. I care about two things. Number one, my Savior is going to be there. And I want to see him. And that, by the way, that is growing every day. And it should be in all of our lives. A longing to see Jesus. So I'm, and our loved ones that have went on to be with the Lord. That's what's going to be there that is attractive to me and probably most of you. The other thing is what's not going to be there. What's not going to be there is sin and all the consequences of it. Think about a place where we don't, we don't get sick. We don't have difficulties and trials. We don't part from our loved ones. A place where there is no more death, no more funerals. The, the funeral directors are going to be out unemployed in heaven. Amen? That, that's where our hope is. So what, what we're talking about today, cultivating hope, we're really talking about cultivating a look to heaven that sustains us now. Used to be, used to be heaven was preached and taught and, and thought about a lot more than it is now because, again, it's been... It's been a substitute gospel has come in and, and made it all about this life. No. I mean, listen, it, we are blessed because we have the Lord with us always. But our real hope is coming. It's coming. We don't have it yet, but one of these days we're all going to be in heaven. Amen? That uh, should be exciting. Excite me just talking about it. All right, but meanwhile... We got to deal with this life, all right? Such as it is. So, hope is something that, in fact, as, as I shared with you last week, when we talk about these ways of cultivating hope, we're really talking about cultivating faith because you faith leads to hope, and faith is the dynamic for the Christian life. Four times in Scripture, we're told that the just shall live by faith. So. That when we're talking about cultivating hope, we're really talking about cultivating the right outlook to the Christian life. All right? So let buckle up. Let's see if we can get through this this morning. How to cultivate hope. Now, this one we looked at last week, so I'm just going to touch on it. The, the first thing is you've got to desire it. All right? There has to be an earnest intelligent desire for Christian hope. It's kind of like the, 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 the desire for revival. I've been thinking about that a lot lately because it's been kind of in the news, and I, I even ordered a book that I'm reading about desiring revival. What, in, unless we really, really want it, we won't have it. Unless we really are desirous of a real, heaven-sent, ongoing, thorough, life-changing revival, we're not going to have it. And the same is true of Christian hope. We're, we're, we will not have anything that we do not desire and seek it. You can't be passive about hope. All right? Number two, with this Connect a determination that you will live after a different fashion. In other words, the hope that we have, again, which is 
vested in eternity, vested in heaven, vested in being with Christ, that hope should impact the way that we live day by day. Again, if, you're, if your hope is just about having a good day, you, you're going to you, you, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to have a heart, a sick heart. The Bible says hope deferred maketh the heart sick. All right? But we need to live after a different fashion. Let me just give you one example of this, and then we'll move on. If, if we believe, if we really believe that our treasures are really in heaven and not here, where Jesus said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, not on earth, if we really believe that, then we don't need very much on this earth. Amen? It's not about getting a good job so we, or getting good education so we can get a good job so we can make a lot of money. That, that's a shallow way of living. It's about living lightly knowing that this is not home. In fact, I, I, I don't know why I've been thinking about this, but I've been thinking much about the fact that our church, our church here, there, there's a lot of images that's used for a church, but I think one of them that we can, that we can use and maybe th- need to think more about is that this is just an embassy for our true home. Our, the Bible talks about our citizenship being in heaven from whence we look for the Savior. So a church is an embassy. This is just an a, a outpost for heaven, if you please. That's the kind of impact that our hope should have. That we're, we're just passing through. We're pilgrims. Don't put down a lot of roots. You're not going to stay here very long. Even if you die and they put you in the ground. I, I've said for years that we ought to be able to rent our grave. Because we don't need to buy it. We're not going to use it for long. Amen? One of these days, we're going to vacate planet Earth. And that should, that should impact the way that we live our lives day by day. It's not all about this life. It's about the life that's to come. Number three, I'm going to camp out here for a little while. There must be a more habitual, devout, prayerful study of the Word of God. Two of you agree with me, amen. I'm, I'm sure many more of you do, but you, you want to know why there's so much anemic Christianity today? Because we neglect the very thing that will build us up as believers. And, and, and it's the very thing, the Word of God is what will build our hope. And we cannot afford to neglect it. We have to spend time in it. We have to read it daily. And and I hope every one of you in here have that habit. And by the way, it has to be a habit. If you get up every morning and say, am I going to read my Bible today? You got at least 50 50 chance of making the wrong decision. Just make it a habit every day. If you have to get up early before everything's going on, then get up early and spend time reading the Word of God. But not just reading it, studying it. Because it, it, the Bible's not unlocked to the casual. It's unlocked to the diligent. Those who will take the time to read it and study it until they understand what God is saying to them. Again, I, you know, the, the fact is we have about as much Christianity as we want. We have about as much Christianity as we pursue. If, if, if you want to have more hope, if you want to have more of, of a, a view of heaven, you have to be in the Word of God. Because I can tell you, that primetime television is not going to build your faith. In fact, it's going to wear it away. The newspaper is not going to build your faith. Dear Abby is not going to build your faith. Some of you are going to get mad now. It's the Bible as we read it, as we study it, every day, every day, every day. 
Listen, if you ate the way that you read the word of God, you'd starve to death. But David said they esteemed God's word more than my necessary meat or more than my food. So every day we need to feast on the word of God because that's what strengthens us spiritually and builds our hope. A neglect of the word will make us anemic as Christians generally and in context of our discussion, weak in our hope. Number four, if we're going to have our hope strengthened, we already touched on this, we must have our faith strengthened. See point number three. All right, faith leads to hope. Amen? All right, how do we get our faith strengthened? Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. All right, so we have to strengthen our faith, and again, that comes as we study the Word of God. All right, number five. Now, now here's where, gosh, I really, really, really want to take some time here, but I'll try to restrain. You have to meditate on the Word of God. Now, I'm, I'm telling you right here, this is a problem that we all have. This is a problem. Because if you're going to meditate, by meditation it means that we think about the word that we've read and studied and how that applies to our life. Meditation, though, is a lost art in our culture. Because we fill our lives with thinking about everything but God and his word. And what he wants from us. And it's worse today. It's worse today than maybe three decades, three or four decades ago. Because now we have, we carry around these uh, distractions. Okay. I want to throw it. Social media. YouTube. The internet, we constantly fill our heads with that stuff and with gaming and with television. And if we're not doing those things, we're listening to music. There, there's a constant noise in our head, constantly. Nobody muses anymore. We amuse. A means not. We amuse ourselves. We are in all kinds of entertainment and all kinds of pursuing of things. And again, they, those have a place, but it needs to be a real little, real little place in our life. So that we got time, we have got time. So that we have time to, to be quiet with God. Just to stop. It's, you know, I, I've sat in this many times, and one of these days when I get the chance, I'm going to put it on the on the our sign out front. Take time to tend your soul. That, that's what's going to heaven, folks. You, you, your soul. And, and yet we tend everything else. We are so busy in the American culture that we don't have time to just sit and think. It's true. Or, or am I the only one? Am I the only one? I mean, I get, I get so busy, I get sick of being busy. And I, I want to say, so, somebody help me find the brake pedal. Somebody stop this thing and let me off a little bit. Just, just so I can sit and think about, for example, the Lord's goodness to us. If you meditate on that, it's not going to be very long. You're going to be saying, wow. And think about heaven. where our true hope is. Think about the Lord. Think about, again, his word. Think about what he would have us do. Think. Of, let me give you a real radical one. Think about other people and being a blessing to them. 
But we got to stop, folks. We got to slow down. We've got to slow down. We've got to slow down. I'll say it one more time. We've got to slow down. We got to quit filling our life with the husk, the pig feed, and start feasting on the Word of God, which is like in the milk and meat, because we need that nourishment. And then think about how that applies to our lives. Now, don't think about how it applies to your spouse's life or your kid's life or your neighbor's life, but how it applies to your life. Stop and do whatever you have to do, again, to make that time. You know, we used to talk about the sweet hour of prayer. I think it's down to about three minutes now. Because we're just so busy. Busy. And what we're mostly busy with is related to this life. And it's not going to last. Amen? I know, I know, that, I know that's kind of hard to hear. In fact, it's kind of hard to hear, period, that we're not doing the right thing. But it's what we need. We, we, you know, again, our fear, our fear should not be that the Lord would ask something difficult of us, like giving up something or changing our life or whatever, restructuring it, or owning our sin, whatever it might be. Our fear is that he would leave us alone. You know, we're, we're worried about God's judgment right now on America uh, because of, of the moral depravity that's becoming so ramp, rampant, and we're thinking, well, you know, we're having all these storms and these floods and these earthquakes and these threats of war. That's not the bad judgment. The bad judgment is when God says, okay, just go your own way, do your own thing. That's when the judgment comes. Amen? All right, meditate. Meditate till heaven is real to you. Till the hope that God has for us becomes the way that we live. All right, number six, keep your conscience clear. Now, there's not a person in this room that doesn't sin on a regular basis. Not, not one of us, okay? The thing is, though, we, uh, Christians can't sin comfortably. So when, when we sin and we're, we're convicted by it, we need to do something with that. If, if you just leave it alone, you know, your heart's going to get a little more calloused. You need to confess that sin and, and ask the Lord to forgive you. Keep your conscience clear. You cannot defile your conscience without weakening your hope. Living godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope. Those are joined together. Living godly and looking for the blessed hope. The man who can expect heaven and sin at the same time is in the last stage of delusion. Number seven, the way to have hope strengthened is to keep it in constant exercise. Exercise that hope. And, and the way you do that is you step out where, where you've got nothing but faith and hope. That's how you exercise it. Amen? Uh, you, well, I want to say you can give your way to that point, but some of you have very sensitive nerves when it comes to talk about giving, so we won't. <laughs> Number eight, moving on. Uh, believing, earnest, persevering prayer is the way you build your hope. Believing, earnest, persevering prayer. He, he would have a life of hope, must have a life of prayer. If hope is the ladder by which we ascend to heaven, prayer is the ladder by which we ascend to hope. Again, you can join that prayer, that prayer time with that, that study of the Word of God. In fact, it's best to do that way because you let God, as you read and study the Word of God, you let Him talk to you, and then you talk to Him in prayer. That's how you build that relationship and build the hope in your life. So, hope is coming. I had somebody a few years back preached a, a message, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Uh, I don't quite agree with the theology because I don't believe Christ was crucified on Friday, but whatever day he was crucified, that was a bleak day. But, Sunday's coming, the resurrection. We have, we have a tough time now, folks. Expect it. Expect it. It's, this world is a fallen world. 
Bad stuff happens in a fallen world. We have challenges, difficulties, sicknesses, trials of all kinds. But one of these days it's going to be We are going to hear the trumpet, and then we're out of here. Amen? And then we're going to enter in to where our true hope is. It is vested in heaven, in Jesus, in eternity. That's where it's vested. And that, once we train our hearts that, to that hope, that will make life better because we'll view all of this as transitory, that, that it, as Paul said, we can't compare it with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It won't, so it won't matter so much. What matters is that one of these days we're going out to be with him forever and ever and ever and ever. Time's short. Eternity's real long. All right? Father, thank you. Thank you for the hope that we have, the true hope. It's not that we're always going to be healthy and wealthy and wise and, and have a bunch of friends. Our, our true hope is that one of these days we're leaving this fallen world. And we're going to a place where all the, all the consequences of the fall are going to be reversed. And we look forward to and long for that time. Before I finish that prayer, every head bowed, every eye closed, let me ask you a question. Do you, do you have the hope that I'm talking about? Listen, it's not a... Well, you know, a lot of people you ask them, will you go to heaven when they die? And they say, I hope so. Not that kind of hope. A hope that is sure. You know you possess it, just not yet. Do you have that hope that when, if you, if you drew the last breath, your heart beat the last time right now, you'd go to be with the Lord? If you have that hope as a testimony of your grace, would you hold your hand up high for me? God bless you. Yeah. Brother Tully said, what a wonderful sight. As far, all right, you may put them down. As far as I can tell, every hand. But let me be sure this morning, is there someone say, I, I don't have that hope, but I want it. So please pray for me. And I'll pray in a way nobody will know it's you, and I won't come to you and embarrass you. I'll honestly pray that God will help you come to the place where you have that hope. If that's you, just slip your hand up and down this morning. No one looking around? No one keeping track? Yes. See your hand. Anyone else? Lord, thank you for what Peter calls a, a living hope, a lively hope, a hope that sustains us even in the midst of an ugly world and, and sometimes difficult circumstances. Help us, Lord, as we've learned this morning to cultivate that hope. Lord, that when others would see us, they would see somebody that lives a little bit different, that marches out of step with most people in the world. And, Lord, it's because of the hope that we have. And we rejoice in it this morning. In Christ's name we pray.